Hi, everybody. Uh, so, so here's something we're trying to do with the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. We're trying to add some video content into our mix and stuff that we're trying to do to promote our businesses and educate our businesses and do that kind of stuff. So I brought in the expert. So Vicki Fitch is here today. She does a lot of live videos. She has a lot of experience doing videos. She does some great work, fantastic work. And she's also here in the Chino Valley community. So what I really wanted to do was bring her in to talk about how we can leverage video to make our businesses more successful. And so we have a plan here at the chamber to use that. And I'm going to kind of act as like a case study on how we should be doing video content to make sure that it's successful. So that's the purpose of the day. So Vicki, uh, do you want to say an introduction first? Sure. Hey, everybody. Um, if you guys don't know me, I'm Vicki Fitch. I am a direct sales expert. I live here in the area. Super excited to be part of the Chino Valley Chamber. Um, a local author as well, and actually wrote a book on social media and live streaming as part of it. So I'm super excited to be here and to help the community. Awesome. And she didn't just write one book. She's written a lot of books. <laughs> uh, but let's go over. So here's what we're trying to do is, as I have an idea to try to do four pieces of content in a month, you know, I'm going to try to do it as best as I can. Mm -hmm. um, so so the, those four pieces of content is one is very similar to this, where it's an educational form of content. I want to try to educate our members on how they can use something in their business to become more successful and interview experts to work with those businesses. So that's number one. Uh, number two, I want to try to showcase and highlight uh, chamber businesses who are using the chamber to become successful. So we have a lot of businesses that have leveraged the chamber and done it really well. So I want to interview those businesses. Uh, I, I plan on doing a live walkthrough video just to kind of show a business to our members what they do, how they do it, and do a live kind of Facebook type video for that. And then the other last piece of video content is to do a monthly update where I'm kind of uh, in front of camera just talking about what the chamber is doing and how we're, the things that we're doing to benefit you and your business. So that's kind of like the, the nuts and bolts of oh, what we're sure. trying to do. Yes, those four different things, but but what I've always had is the question is, how do I do that in the, in the right way, in the mm -hmm. way that businesses are going to be able to see it, take advantage of it, and use it? Uh, so that's what I really wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, so, so based off of those four pieces of content, how would be the, what would you imagine being the best way that I could get those out to our businesses? Well, I think, I mean, I think those are great questions because first of all, a lot of people aren't using video content. They're not using live streaming or video content to actually build the business and the brand. And if we give them the, the steps, like what you were suggesting to create that and answer their questions. And that's why we wanted to make sure that um, that Q and A is like a, a part of it, because mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but when I listen to someone and I, you know, it's like, okay, how do I do that? What do I do? How, what's next? And so I think the, the pillars that you're putting together there are really, really be helpful. And hopefully through this, you know, this discussion today, we can give you guys those steps because we got to get started. We got to figure out how to repurpose the content uh, because all of us are busy. Wouldn't you say, Seb? I Absolutely. Mean and that is exactly why I wanted to have <laughs> you here because I want to streamline this, make it as easy and simple for, as simple for myself as possible so that we can get the content that we need to our businesses while also not taxing on my time too much. Yeah, <laughs> not just his time, but, uh -huh. the, but the other entrepreneur's time because sure. that's why a lot of people freeze and they don't like, I don't have time to learn that. I don't have time to do it, but we want to help you integrate it as part of your day-to-day -day operations and part of the business. So you're not feeling that stress or overwhelm um, or needing to hire somebody externally. Although of course that's a great option and the, and the chamber has some great people involved in as well. For sure. So do you want to ask me some individual questions? And Yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk or? about each of those individually. Okay. So there's an interview style of video of you and I. Mm -hmm. What's the best platform for me to share that with? So that we have like Facebook Live as an example. We have YouTube. I can do it on a webinar. We have mm -hmm. a Zoom account. Sure. Uh, what's should I be using all of them? Should I be using one of them? What are, what are your thoughts there? Okay, well, I think both, and, and for many of you guys, if you're just starting out, you want to pick a platform. You know, one platform that you're going to focus on. And, and Facebook happens to still have 1.7 billion users per day. So mm -hmm. it is still the widest spectrum. And even if you think the businesses that you're targeting aren't on Facebook, the gatekeepers to get you into those businesses are. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great platform. Right now, we're actually on Facebook Live on, on both my account, I believe, and the Chambers yep. account. 
plus we're creating some video content again for the repurposing portion which i think we're going to talk about a little bit later but so i would say most businesses want to start with facebook uh oh. you know again i'm going broad spectrum depending on what your business is we could you know pick a different platform of instagram you know we're going to be talking at some point about TikTok and and how some of these other platforms that people are saying they're only for kids how they're really going to be the up and coming platform where you could be, you know, the person that's, that's breaking in before everybody else does and you can gain that popularity that you're looking for. And not because of a, a, an esteem issue, like you want to be like the kids at you know, school, that okay, I, gotta yeah. be, I have to be TikTok famous or, you know, I have to, you, but you want to get your message out there. So you are the authority on a platform before other people have been, if at all possible. So Facebook would be a primary goal. But I think what we had mentioned um, at some point, Zeb, is showing people how to multi-stream. Mm -hmm. You know, we're multi-streaming right now, but to show you uh, some of the tools that are available for you to multi-stream uh, and push your content to different places, plus how to then create what I call micro content, which I mm -hmm. believe is, is the absolute landscape of the future. You guys probably agree that people have limited time. Sure. And you know, we have a, the attention span of a goldfish is what we've been said. So we, we scroll, 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 something has to catch our attention. Mm -hmm. And if we only have little bits of time, you know, a 15 minute video isn't what we're looking for. If we're looking for an instructional video or something yeah. to do, like here, you might be listening or you might go later to the YouTube say it, but you're going to go to YouTube if you want to learn how to do it. If we have some step-by-step -step instructions for you. So cool. each platform provides something different, but I, most businesses are going to probably start um, on Facebook as the, the first dimension, unless you're trying to, to, present something special then you know like a webinar format would be delivering a message and sometimes collecting fees as well okay great 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 so those are something like uh, uh, from thinking from the chambers perspective perspective it, i know it's about audience size so like you meant we talked about tiktok we talked about those other things and a lot of these uh some of them are for the younger generation uh, some of them are for more established <laughs> folks some of them are going along the way so uh, so your recommendation for a business like the Chamber of Commerce or like those established businesses would be to start on Facebook and then pursue those other things as you get comfortable with those platforms. Yes. And I know some of you, if you're younger, are saying, no, we need to be on Instagram. That's where you should be. Instagram is a great place and we'll probably talk about it at different mm -hmm. times and platforms. But you have to think of the 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 base of businesses because businesses have a presence on Facebook and it's a bigger user base. It doesn't mean that your specific business shouldn't be on Instagram as a primary. We're going with a global, yeah. trying to figure out the generalities and, and pick something without specifics. Yeah, and that's one thing too from a Chamber of Commerce perspective is, is that that is typically where our audience is, is, is most of the people that we're talking with or that we're engaging with mm -hmm. are a Facebook audience. And mm -hmm. so those are people that are, that's where they're looking first and foremost for their information. So I think, so thank you. That's exactly where we'll be focusing on uh, to get started, of course, but we do want to kind of experiment in different areas Definitely. because we are trying to grow our younger audience to get younger people involved. And so it makes sense to use the Instagram. I mean, we're definitely using Instagram. Mm -hmm. We're setting up the YouTube. We don't have a TikTok account yet, but that might be something that we I'm start working doing on it, guys. Just she so is, you know. <laughs> she is. She is. Uh, okay. So, so the other question is, is uh, another thing is live versus recorded videos. Mm -hmm. uh, I know video content is a good idea, but then in some cases it's video content. I know you do a lot of video content, but there's other facets of doing uh, recorded content where you're editing the video, making it look super nice. We do a lot of those videos inside the chamber as well. Sure. Give some feedback about live video versus recorded video, the benefits or the downfalls okay. of each one. So let's first talk algorithm. Okay. The algorithm used to absolutely prioritize. It always prioritized video as soon as it came on the market. Mm -hmm. And then it was uh, definitely highly prioritizing live streaming. The algorithms changed a little bit. It's still mm -hmm. looking for video content but it's looking for video content that keeps people's eyeballs. So if you have an engaging type of content, then a live stream is a great way to reduce your time that you need to do it and get the engagement. If you do a drier form, now I'm not saying you're dry, but if you're doing a drier form, or if you have a lot of gaps in uh -huh. what you say, like some people talk very slow, those kind of things you might want to edit to get rid of the ums or the o's and get rid of those things because you're, you have very limited time to keep people interested. So if they're scrolling through and you're going, well, today we're going, they've already left, right? Mm -hmm, so sure. if we are doing something live, we want to cut some of that stuff out and get right to the point. You know, want to, you know, you need to keep their attention. Cool. So 
in those regards, like I said, you have to pick up what your style is. I personally am really busy, just like you and the chamber members, and I choose to push my video content out immediately. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing something on um, YouTube, oftentimes, like on my podcast, I'll put an intro and an outro. But the intro, you know, intros used to be really popular, but now that intro has to be about a fraction of a second. It's got your kind of your logo and boom, la launching into it, or you'll lose that scroll too. So you got to remember the intention span of people is very minor. So taking that content, whatever it is, and then chunking it up in what I call micro content of, of, of one minute or less is a way for you to utilize the same piece on multiple platforms. And I think we'll talk about that, how we can do that later too. So let's talk about uh, engaging content or getting people. So, so one of the challenges is that if I'm just starting out and I remember trying to do video for the first time and it was like a terrifying thing, you're going in and trying to do it. And then you want to think about, oh, how can I be educating and entertain or entertaining? Uh, so, so what are some things? Edutaining. Yeah, yeah. Right. So what are some things that somebody could do where they're jumping in right away and feel like they're doing something that's entertaining? Well, it depends on their comfort zone, right? I mean, uh, using props can always be fun, right? Cool. So if you have the top five things in your business and you have some props, like, um, and that, this is also a great tip for TikTok too, is that, you know, let's say, and I didn't bring any props with me today, mm -hmm. next time I'll be much more prepared, but, you know, a pair of sunglasses, you know, a pair of like heart-shaped sunglasses. Okay. Today's Valentine's Day, but happy Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, I you. Zeb, you. you say you. happy Valentine's to your wife from um, putting a pair of glasses on, just saying that, putting those on to say happy Valentine's Day when you start, that prop will get people's attention, right? And so uh -huh. you can have your top five things. And is there some props I can do that, that can make that entertaining? And I recognize that some people will try and go into the perfectionism. We don't, you don't want to be perfect, right? People are, they want real, right? That's why reality TV, which, you know, from what I hear is not really so much reality TV as mm -hmm. we think it is, but why people are, uh, they, they have an appeal there to reality TV because there's, there's something unexpected going to happen. Yeah. Something, I mean, I remember on a live stream, I dumped a hot cup of coffee on myself. I'm like, cool. I was like, Whoa, uh -huh. Whoa, okay. Anyway, you know what I'm doing this? I'm like, sure. yes, I just dumped a hot cup of coffee, but that, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was painful, but it was uh -huh. entertaining. I didn't actually need to leap up and get out of the room. You know, when you're, when you start doing that, your clothes does, do absorb some of it. But the point is, is that it was entertaining for other people. I wasn't physically injured. It's not like we're going to, we're going to get Good, like, right. Yes. Now we're not, you know, when people hurt themselves, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> but if you can just be you, a lot of people would be mortified. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. People appreciate the reality of what's, what's transpiring and they appreciate people being vulnerable. Now I know vulnerability is really, really rough, but you know, if you can get yourself to that place where you're willing to put yourself out there and say, you know, that you're scared or that you're this or you're that, or, hey, or helping other people get over their fears. Yeah. Like here's the top five fears that I had when I started live streaming. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys don't know my story, uh, the first live stream I did, I actually did my shoes, like, cause I couldn't figure out how to get the camera to turn around. So uh -huh. that's why Zeb's doing stuff like this. So you, so you can learn and miss those pitfalls that, you know, people that were the trailblazers that we, you know, we started, because I started this the day that, that the app became available. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, that's another thing that I've noticed. Uh, most people think that they have to put out something that's perfect or something that sets them up, uh, that, that does this really amazing thing. Right. And I remember the first time that I did a video piece of content, it was for a tutoring business that I had started. And uh, my sister had got this nice camera we set up the site. I, I wrote out a script that I was going to say it was like 60 seconds worth of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I kid you not, it took me about four hours to get that done because <laughs> I kept messing up oh. and I was super nervous uh -huh. and I couldn't go through it. And so it's changed a lot over the years in terms of just doing it yeah. and then getting the experience of doing it and then making it uh, better every time. And so I'm still not, still don't feel like I have the confidence that you do. I know that I watch Vicky on the live feeds a lot and she's always a, uh, She's like um, a pro, <laughs> meaning that she could just go on and talk and talk. And then, and it's, it's kind of For amazing. Days, to right? watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's super amazing to see that. But one of the things that I remember, because I do remember you, because you and I were connected before the live feed, uh -huh. live stream started. Uh -huh. And so as soon as it came on, she was publishing it right away and she was actually the first i think she was the first person that i actually watched the live stream for and i logged I feel in so good about myself right now yeah <laughs> i know i think so so i logged in and then she's like oh hey zeb as just and i was like 
oh, this is freaky because she <laughs> saw that I was on this thing. Uh, so, so talk about maybe if you are doing a live video, what are some kind of key things that you can do to make a live video successful? Well, first of all, you know, and, and I do have a free course, which we'll give you guys a link for at the end that you can awesome. learn all the basics because that's, that is the, the stre most stressful part. What platform should I go on? How do I do? What's the lowest barrier of entry? Mm -hmm. You know, where are the trolls going to be? You know, cause you you know, you get trolls, but I totally teach you how to fix those too. Cause they're like, did you know that we, I actually had trolls sending money that don't sending donations, like as apologies for being mean. And because when, yeah. when right, I know it's, it's. <laughs> I'll, crazy. I'll, I call them troll yeah, conversions. Mean to me. Right. Well, sure. you know, it's like they're mean. And then you say, why, 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 you know, we uh -huh. ask people why, and you know, that's my thing. Peek behind the curtain. We find that people that come into a live stream to say something mean are just hurting inside. I mean, think about it. You wouldn't walk into someone's home and go, Hey dude, you're ugly and your house is trash. You speak, know, you, you speak just for would, yourself. right. You just wouldn't, <laughs> you would do that. Okay. Oh, I do that all the time. <laughs> All right, so we just learned something new about Seb, you guys, but we'll all work uh -huh. on him. We'll work on him. <laughs> but the point is, is that you want to, first of all, greet guests. Now, Zeb and I were talking about this earlier about the, the greeting. I'm a big greeter. Right now, I'm not greeting guests because this is a, you know, a different type of format. And we'll sure. check those answers. Let's do this, but let's but, do a sample right now. Okay. Go for it. Of, of reading questions. Well, I can see Kathy's here. Welcome to the broadcast. Juliana's here. And I can see Peter Joseph and Deanna Margarita. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for being here. And so introducing when people come in, like Zeb said, I said hello to him. I don't then have a conversation with those people. I stay on track. I have a message that's planned. I don't have it written out, but I have a topic. And sometimes those topics will, you know, kind of move around because I'm my personal goal. And you got to pick what your goal is when you're delivering mm -hmm. that message is that I want to provide value. And if the value um, tends, you know, comes from us veering a little bit off topic, not not out in left field, but a little bit off topic to wrap around and go, I can see where you would ask that question and let's tie that into the message. Otherwise, what I tell them and hey, tweet me on Twitter or message me here on Facebook and I'll put that on the list and we'll talk about that tomorrow. So you can, you're engaging with the audience so they recognize that you're paying attention and you're not ignoring them because that's one of the things about live stream is that they're live. And so you yeah. have a chance to interact or ask a question. And when we can provide that to them, then people will come back. And when you provide them an opening to ask you questions about your expertise, then, you know, and don't pretend you know something you don't know. And don't be afraid to say, that is a great question. I'll have to get back to you on that. And just say, let me make a note of that. You can, you're, you're real and be real. You don't have to know everything. And that's where I think people get nervous is that they're going to ask me a question I don't know the answer to. Well, that's okay. I'm telling you, this is gold. Write it down. That's a great question. Let me get back to you on that. How about we talk about that tomorrow, Perfect. right? Or yeah. next week, or you can say, hey, I'll talk about that on next week's show. Whatever you wanna do. Good, so on that note, if you do have questions and you are watching this live, you could go ahead and answer those questions or ask those questions, or if you're watching a repeat, please do, and we'll be sure to make sure that we answer those. Uh, the next thing is, is we, we were talking about setup. And so one of the things that another uh, hang up that a lot of people might have when they're doing their video content is how do I set this up so that I make sure that uh, I'm putting the best foot forward, making sure that it looks nice and stuff like that. So we kind of talked about that beforehand, but uh, do you have any advice on how to make sure you're setting things up for success when you do actually shoot a video? Absolutely. Um, a couple of things like I don't, you guys can't see the three different um, things that we have going right now. Mine happens to have a, a, it's really bright. I don't know why exactly what it's hitting, but usually I'll have a ring light and stuff that's put there. There, because Zeb, well, yours looks pretty good. I think it's the sun. So we have part. the sun and it's the angle. So we have like I, wait, sun you mean it's because I'm angelic? That, that's true. Okay, Valentine's just, Day. Okay, yeah, right. That's there what it is. Okay. So, but you want to look, and there's a couple base pieces of equipment that you can check out my website uh, on the resources page. It tells you what I actually use. It's not expensive. You do not need this, you know, a huge setup. What you need is a couple things like a tripod. Um, I have a little ring light. I think they're like 15 bucks. We're talking, you know, it's the Archon uh, ones because they last a long time, you know, when mm -hmm. you charge them. But having those couple pieces of equipment, and this is, you guys are going to laugh, but if you want to have people take you seriously, don't do scopes or, or broadcasts from your bed. 
like, right? I mean, that it just sends a message that either one, you just woke up, number two, that you're looking for a different kind of audience, right? So you, I, I mean, I'm being serious because some yeah. people just, they don't think they're inside, you know, they're in bed, like with their covers up. And if you're doing a nighttime story to the kids or something, you know, then maybe that works. But if you're trying to deliver value as a business, you, people need to take you seriously as an entrepreneur. Do you have to have makeup on and make your hair look? No, but brush your hair, right? We don't want like this unless that's the, that's the problem you're using i've done that before and going ah you know does you ever feel like this <laughs> where i stick my hair up but just be you and don't be afraid to be who you are and and recognize that value did i answer your question because i feel yeah. like I've yeah no that sounds good i think uh that's the other thing is is just uh, i think probably the easiest thing is to get hung up on something like that it's really not that big of a deal i think right. if you have it set up and you, you know you're you're thinking of the audience and what they want, mm -hmm. and then you're making sure that that kind of uh, background reflects that. So, like you mentioned, if you're if you're a professional and you're trying to don't shoot a video while you're in bed under your covers, they look right. like a mess. Right. If you're shooting a video like this, try to do it, you know, where you're dressed up somewhat appropriately mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, looking like you and, did it just like wake up. We, out of bed. we stuck this the chamber banner behind us. You can have we nothing did. behind you, but you don't want to have something that's really busy. Like in front of, I don't know if your refrigerator looks like mine with the kids' artwork and pictures and stuff. You don't want to do a broadcast in front of there, not because it doesn't show you're perfect, but because people get distracted, you know, oh, what's that artwork on there? What does that look that, you know, it's the mind works that way. So mm -hmm. you want to try and give people a reason to stay focused on you and your message. Perfect. So, so let's say I don't have that experience of doing videos before. I've never done one. Uh, what's like something that would make it really easy for me to get started and feel comfortable getting started? Well, again, being, you, you're just going to have to hit the button, right? And if you put test, you know, or, you know, um, first scope, first scope or first um, live broadcast, come help me out and come say hi, just practice people. I know if you tag me in it, I'll show up and say hello, you know, because that's all you're trying to do is get your feet wet. And in um, the entrepreneurial rock stars, I think you're part of our, our group. I, I got a lot of people's careers launched in live streaming because we did what we called a Perry hop at, at the time Periscope was the only app that was out. I mean, Meerkat was out, but it was dying. But yeah. anyway, and we did a Perry hop. And so we taught people how to live stream and we would go from live stream. So each person could practice and the chamber, we could do something like that with the chamber is just teaching people how to practice. Cause what you want is to figure out how do I answer? I see Eric is here and um, yeah, I see Debbie Eric. Magger join in and you know that we want people to understand how to do it and not feel feel weird. And when you know you've got a team of people like the chamber hanging out going, hey, we're cheering you on and saying, hey, great job or asking questions and giving you a chance. And then maybe if you want some feedback afterwards, you know, we could review a video and say, hey, um, you might try this or you might try that. But just again, just hit the button, hit it. True. Hit it. And one of the things that I might also want to point out is there's a, there's also a difference in kind of like who this message is for. I think a lot of people think of video content or putting out there and putting it out to the masses. Uh, one of the things that I might encourage you to think about is also there's what we call reach in, in marketing. We call reach or we call depth. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's the reach component, which is trying to reach massive amounts of people, which is great. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I feel like I try to use is I try to do the depth of content to make sure that people get an understanding of what it is that we're doing. So as an example, we did a video recently on how to get the most out of your chamber membership. And so it was a 40 minute, a 40 minute long video piece of content. So I don't imagine that a lot of people the average person is coming in to look at that piece of content. But because I put that out there, we had, I had probably about five or six people that proactively reached out to me because of that video, because they watched it the whole way through. Uh, they got some really cool insights and pieces of information from people. And those are the people that were trying to reach this thing. So sometimes it's like, think of who is following you on your Facebook or your social media channels create that content for them. And that ties them in closer to you and your business, as opposed to thinking like, Oh, I'm blasting this out to the masses. I'm blasting it out to our chamber members. I'm saying, and here's what is, I think you will find valuable and what the chamber has to offer. It goes there. And because of that, people will get sucked in or attracted to your video in some cases. I think that's good. And I think we also want to remember it's really though we're trying the ICA, right? Our deal client avatar, like who yep. are we, who, who is going to benefit from our yep. message? And those people like De Zeb said, you want to get some reach, but the depth is where you create the relationships. That's where you get the engagement, which is why you want to ask questions or give people an opportunity 
to interact with you. That creates the depth in an audience where people will follow you. And you need to ask people to follow because people don't remember and don't, or I don't recommend you make this big production. Hey, you got to follow me and don't do follow for follow. That's just really don't, don't do that. But to say, hey, by the way, if you guys are finding value here, hit that, you know, subscribe button or hit that, um, you know, live notification button, hit the follow button because people forget, like I'm sitting there putting makeup on or whatever, or I'm listening to something. And when somebody says like, oh yeah, this is great. And so I remember, so you want to just, just remind people in a, in a respectful cool. way, if you're finding value, then this is what we, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. If you're, that's why I always say, if you're finding value, if you'd hit the share button, right? You go. Cause you want people to share, right? Hey, by the way, <laughs> if you're finding value, hit the share button. If you're not, I always say, if you're new, just kick back and relax, put your name in the chat so I can say hello. But if you know you're going to find value, um, Oh, Eric says he can't hear me, but I look great. Oh, well, that would be a bummer if we can't, if you guys can't that hear me on my video. That would be a super bummer. Right? Yes. I feel so, should I yell at you? No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for telling us, Eric. Were you able to, because I know you were over on Zeb stream. Were you able to hear us there? Yeah, so anyway, let us know. Um, and just, just like I said, keep that in mind, you guys, is that you're your target, right? And try mm -hmm. and we're trying to create relationships. We're talking to Eric, we're, we're talking to Deanna and, you know, we're talking to the maggards, just, just remind you to talk to those people and, and like I said, creating relationships and, and ask them what you want them to do or tell them, Hey, if you're finding value, give me a follow. Cool. So we've covered some of these things. Uh, one of the last, like, like my last main question would be, you know, quick pieces of advice that people could use to get results. The whole reason for doing video is because you want it to benefit your business, mm -hmm. uh, have tangible outcomes that you can get. Uh, what are some quick things that we can do to, or some, some pieces of advice that you can give to people so that they can get those results for their business? Okay. So really quick there, you know, First of all, I am doing an event. I think we wanted to tell them over yeah. here, a local in this Chino Staple, um, I mean, the, yeah, the Chino Staple Spotlight Center on Tuesday night at 6.30. I'm doing a leveraging the power of live streaming event to help you guys. Yeah. But that's what he's talking about. How do you leverage this? You know, nobody wants to sit here and spend time if you're not getting anything out of it. And I don't recommend that you do, although you do have to put in some time to show value so people will start to follow and create the engagement. So don't give up in the beginning. But what do you want to do? Number one, like I said, if you want to leverage it, you, you got to ask for the follow. You got to ask for them to share out the video if they're finding value and you have to be giving value. Make sure that something you're giving, it's not about you talking about yourself. It's about what value can you give? Like we're talking about how live streaming can help you, what platforms you can be on and response, being responsive to questions. You may put a little quick survey out to people that you know, or the chamber members say, hey, what are the top five things you wanna know about this business? You know, about social media, about mm -hmm. golfing, about, you know, tech, uh, you know, about IRS regulations, whatever it is. And then you can answer those questions. You want to provide value. And when you provide value, you also want, and this is really important. You want to try and get them to connect with you off the platform at any time. This platform can close down when, um, if you guys were familiar with a live streaming platform called blab, that's where we actually interviewed. We got Tony Robbins to go on there and we interviewed him on blab the platform. I had, I think I think 20,000 followers on Blab. And one day they just set the platform down. It was just like, literally they, on Medium, they posted a thing. I had 38 podcast shows already scheduled out and they just sent this thing out. Sorry, we decided to close long live Blab and whatever. And, and so if you don't connect with your audience off the platform, you have mm -hmm. no way to communicate with them. So here's where I would say to you, my website is vickyfitch.com. If you go there and you want the free, you go to the freebies page, you can get the free day. It's called rock that stream. You can get the free day mini core, three free three day mini course mm -hmm. to teach you how to do live streaming. But that's how you leverage it because you want people then to, if they're interested in what you have to say and what you know, they'll get on that kind of a marketing list, an email list though. You're, but you're providing what value I'm providing you more tips that you can watch over and over again on how to do your live streaming. So that I think I don't want to overwhelm you with too many more tips, sure. but those are the things that you want to remember when you're providing value, you get, you get the permission to ask them for their email address to provide more value. Hopefully that makes sense.
Okay, so let's go in and, and talk about that. So specific, specifically for the chamber, we talked about those four pieces of video content that we're planning on mm -hmm. doing. We're planning on doing the education format where we're doing something very similar to this, where mm -hmm. I'm interviewing an expert, we're mm -hmm. giving some education and advice. Um, we're doing those highlight of successful businesses. Mm -hmm. We're doing those live video walkthroughs of chamber businesses. And I'm doing a talk to camera, kind of here's our monthly update of what's been happening here. Mm -hmm. How can I make sure as when I'm doing those things that I'm getting the maximum out of those efforts uh, okay. to generate results for the for our, our chamber, uh, generating members, getting people to do business with us, that kind of thing. Having a special offer, a freebie or something, like for instance, um, I do a segment called Girl on the Street where I'll go in with what you're saying you're doing with the businesses, okay. whether it's a behind the scenes look or something. And maybe that business has a special offer that day for people. If they come in, they have, maybe they have a promotional mug they can get, or they can get a discount off an order. You're trying, what you're trying to do is drive traffic. You're driving traffic to the business. Okay. Um, on the chamber, when you're doing the chamber thing, maybe you have a uh, some some kind of uh, promo that's hey you can come to the next chamber meeting for free you know what whatever or bring okay. a guest for free so offer them something they want to you want to give them a reason to be there that they only get when they're there you oh. know why what can I get for being here so when the business is promoted those people need to be prepared for something and maybe you're inviting them to something what's your next action how can so if they're at this um, you're showing, you know, you're talking of interviewing a business. Maybe yeah. they're, maybe you interview them right before they do the ribbon cutting and say, Hey, you guys come over. We're having a ribbon cutting. There's some drawings. There's these things. So we're driving them to the next thing where we can give them not only value, but let's face it. We all kind of like free stuff. I mean, if you don't, you could give me your free stuff. All right, cool. <laughs> so on that note, here is what we will give away for you. Uh, if you're watching this or okay. watching this on video. Uh, so I mentioned the two types of videos. This is only for our members. So you have to be a member of the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce. So if you're not a member, you could become one and I'll let you qualify for this. Uh, I'm going to hold them to that. But we you. talked about shooting a, a piece of video content and doing that, doing a walkthrough of your business. It could be a walkthrough of your business or it could be interviewing you about the value that you received from the chamber. And this will go out to our chamber membership, just like the chat that we're having here yes. with Vicki today. Uh, so if you are interested, make sure you comment uh, on this Facebook video or, or wherever you're seeing it. So if you see it somewhere else, you can also shoot me an email and say, hey, Zeb, I saw the video and I want to take advantage of that. And I tell good? you, it does. And you know what I will do? I'll add on we'll to that, right? Yeah. Is that for the first three people, I will come out and help with the thing and share it out on my social platforms we'll as well. Check that out. All right. So there, there you go. That sounds great. So this is exactly what I wanted to do and what we wanted to try to get out of this workshop. Oh, here's another question I yes. have for you. So in terms of a branding context, we have this type of educational video. We're having this discussion mm -hmm. here. Now I'm, I'm putting you on the spot because I know we haven't had time to think about it, but what should we call something like this? Is there, do you have names that you should be calling your video pieces of content? So if I plan on doing this once a month or I'm interviewing somebody like this, what should we call it? Well, first of all, I do recommend that. And I recommend in, in the free uh, three day mini course, I talk about that using, even in your titles, using some type of alliteration, some type. So if we can think of something catchy, with either the chamber or with Zeb, like where we could use, you know, Z is a little rough, but then, but you know, you uh, on the web with Zeb, right? Yeah. So you, coming up with something that's that people can remember right. or um, chamber chats, you know, something like that, where again, it's something that's got some alliteration or some rhyming, something that people can go, oh yeah, have you seen on the Zeb, on the web with Zeb? Because uh -huh. it's a really cool uh, uh -huh. feature. And then you create a graphic or a logo, you know, you, you create something to really brand it. So people go, oh, yeah, I know what that is. And I remember, see, I see him smirking. Do you guys see that smile? Like, I think he likes the idea. Do you like the idea? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. So if concept, you are watching not it, that one, but the concept. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Yes. And then that's what I was thinking of. We want to have these names for these different things. So that when I'm kicking it off, I can say, Hey, here's what we're doing today. And then talk about it from there. Uh, so with that, let me kind of wrap this up here. I want to uh, point out a couple of things. So I think Vicki mentioned it earlier. She is going to be speaking on Tuesday, February 18th from mm -hmm. 630 to 730 on leveraging the power of streaming at the Staples Spotlight Center in Chino. Yes. So if you are interested in that, feel free to attend that. Also, we talked about doing a, 
so this was kind of like a, a informal sit down interview to show like to cover those main questions and then what we're going to try to do is we set it up for next, next week Wednesday. right i mean next friday, friday. <laughs> next friday <laughs> at 10 30 we're going to do an actual live stream we're planning it and so here's like the the the, the setup for you that we're going to be doing this next week so it's next week 10 30 on friday we're going to do another live stream which will be going which will be kind of like sh showing the example of what a live stream should look like uh that we're sending out to our audience and stuff like that so that's the plan um do you have anything else that i missed um i just that remembering like i said too then that event for next week you guys can send in your questions you can send them to zeb you can send them to me that we'll get those prepared because we know you have questions if you want to pop them in here now um i see fraser and john are here um so we have like uh seven different countries that i know are popped in that have been here so we cool. are yeah so we are an international market and you want to remember that too is that you're when you hit the live button you allow yourself to be an international business even if we're focused focusing on local businesses, which we can talk about that too, like using relevant hashtags to really focus in on those people, that your, your audience expands and people have, will refer business to you from other places, right? So keep that in mind. Send us your questions on how to build your business. Use the chamber as a resource. The whole reason they're here and the whole reason Zeb has taken on this um, amazing project of building out and trying to really interview people and give you the depth instead of just the reach is because he wants to help businesses succeed. And he wants the Chino Valley Chamber, I imagine, to be one of the top chambers, right? Well, one of my goals oh, before I got took over the chamber responsibility was I, I really wanted to um, make Chino and Chino Hills like the uh, internet marketing hub because I know that if we're all proactive in doing online marketing like Vicky is mm -hmm. doing that, what it does is it brings those world audiences into our communities and and, and that's where uh, the you know, funding comes uh, from businesses that are doing business electronically. Uh, that comes into our communities and makes our community bigger, better, and stronger. And like from search engine optimization perspective, mm -hmm. if we're active online and we're linking to each other's businesses, I know that when people are searching for that online, my business is going to be way up higher in the search engine rankings because we're all active online, as opposed to if you're not, mm -hmm. then uh, then, then those other agencies or those other areas that are, are profiting while we would not be. <laughs> yeah. And we want to help them trigger those algorithms. Exactly. And so we want to help your business grow. And the way that we know, one of the easiest ways for us to do that is to be proactive online. So that was the intention for today was to make it easy for you to use video content to promote and grow your business so that we as a general area of businesses all become more successful because of that. So Vicki, I want to thank you for joining us today, sharing your insights, talking about how to do this. A reminder, we'll be here again next week. Please ask your questions in the comments. Thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. And I do see, um, I, I know that some questions are popping up, although Fraser's oh, in Scotland go. and I can't, I don't think you're asking a question. You're just saying good to see you and hope Zeb's well. So like I said, you'll, you have a, yeah, see, Zeb. That's I'm fantastic. It's Valentine's Day. So we're going out, uh, obviously spending some time with the family tonight. I love it. I love it. So anybody else have any questions, feel free to pop them in really quick. Cause Zeb and I agreed we'd answer some questions if you had them at the end, but remembering that video content and the link, by the way, for the free three day mini course, it's Vicki Fitch, V I C K I F is in Frank, I T C H dot com and go to the freebies page or even across the top it'll say rock that stream it's that's the name of the course and that's something you guys want to know too when you're doing a, a video sometimes you have to spell your name right if your website vicky could be a y or an ie so vickyfitch.com spelling it out v-i-c-k-i-f-i-t-c-h think about that on your own website and when you're creating names for a website be very careful about that too, about things that are difficult for people to spell. <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. So I don't see any other questions popping up, but you guys definitely send them to us during the week. Uh, show up. I recommend you guys go to happy to be a link or connection to Zeb in Scotland if he's interested. Because, you know, I think the chamber needs to go to Scotland to figure out how they're doing stuff well, over there, Well, I right? think he might know <laughs> that I'm in the golf industry because there's a lot of golf that happens in Scotland. So I, that's probably where that's coming from. So I would love, actually my family's from Scotland. Maybe really? you saw that. I did not know that. 
God. My great grandfather came to the United States uh, with the only thing that he had was a letter of recommendation from James Braid, which is a famous golfer in Scotland. And so he took that to the United States, and uh, that's my family background. So. Wow, this is like really a history of Zeb, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <For> sure. Yeah, <laughs> but but we got to get going. So I want to thank you, Vicky, again. Thanks for everything. Thank you for guys, everybody watching. And uh, yeah, what was his name? Steve. Fraser. Oh, that Fraser. Uh -huh. Fraser. Yeah. Feel free to shoot me a message and I'll be happy to chat with you more about Scotland. All right. Well, thank you for being here, guys. We appreciate you. See you Tuesday night at Chino's Spotlight Center. Um, you want to register through the Eventbrite link. Uh, they've asked us to do that. And I know you can get it on my events page or the Staples page. So anyway, guys, appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye. All right. Thanks. Bye. And you guys know for mine, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Ciao. <laughs>